So we are standing by with none other than North Carolina quarterback prospect Drake May, my fellow Tar Heel. How are you doing this morning? Yes, ma'am. Doing great. Yeah, thank y'all for having me on. Just uh, been a great week. You know, blessed to be here. This is you know such a great event. You know, getting with the guys and meeting the teams, and uh, just you know, just blessed to be here. Well, I have to admit, I had a chance to talk to you in Vegas. I met your father leading up into the Super Bowl, so you and I have already chatted a little bit. But I'm going to get right into it because one of the things that's really interesting with me is that you uh, met with the Broncos, right? And obviously they picked 12th, and sometimes when quarterbacks come to the Combine, they won't even meet with teams that are not within the top 10. So first of all, tell me why you elected to do that and what they were trying to figure out. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it was great in there with Denver. You know, I think the biggest thing for me is, you know, if they want to meet with me, just be open to meet with forever. I think, you know, the crazy thing about the NFL nowadays is all these coaches go different places. You may run into them some somewhere down the road. So uh, just being open to meeting with whoever, you know, Davis Webb was in there, the quarterback coach. Uh, you know, he was a great guy in college to play for, you know, to, to watch on, on TV growing up. So uh, just being in there, you know, Coach Payton is a legend, you mm -hmm. know, with, with offensive mind. So just being in there and just being open and just letting know what, uh, what I'm about and who I am and just meeting these guys is kind of, you know, my approach to it. You've been working with Philip Rivers this off season. Can you tell the impact he's had on you? Oh, it's been awesome. You know, Philip is you know first off, he's just you know one of the guys. You know, he's great to be around. Um, he's a competitor. Shoot, I think that's the biggest thing for me you know, is where we relate. You know, competing and uh, keeping score and competing on you know throwing competitions and uh, you know just you know, I think the biggest thing from Philip was learning is just how he stayed healthy. He played so many years um, and so many games or so many seasons. He played 17 games. You don't see that very much you know around in the NFL, especially with the quarterback position. And uh, you know, just watching him and get to know him. He's got you know 10, 11 kids. You know, something like that. So uh, he's got it going on down there. Are you trying to say he has a football squad, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's got a motivational you know place down there too. You got a, you know. You know, pickleball court and a guest house and a football field. Oh, so, you're moving in. Yeah, pretty, it's pretty motivational you know, to see something like that and you know, work towards that. Well, one of the things that I wanted to also give you a chance to illuminate, because a lot of people talk about the statistical season that Jaden Daniels had last year, but I want to give you a chance to just illuminate the impact you feel like having you know, the offensive line that you did and or lesser resources your last season may have had an impact on the season that you had last year. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is Coach Brown you know, coming into the year, um, you, know, you wanted to run the ball and uh, establish the run on first down and be able to run in the red zone. And I think we did that. You know, still one of the most explosive offenses in, um, you know, in college football, and we pride ourselves in that. You know, just being explosive, playing fast, and, you know, playing in a hurry. And there's games where, you know, we ran it for 200, and there's games where we threw it for 400. So it's one of those things where, you know, kind of whatever is working, and uh, you know, still one of the most efficient offenses. And, you know, I just did my job to try to move the ball and score points. And, you know, I think you, you know, sometimes overblow, you know, blow over that. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, my job is, you know, to go out there and try to win games and uh, you know, not, you know, just try to get, you know, Hot, the biggest stats I can. So I have to ask him yeah, something. He please. just made a comment. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you into pickleball by chance? Yeah, he was pickleball player. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so since I retired down in Sanibel, I picked up pickleball. Yeah, let's go. So let me ask you a question. Uh huh. If you had to put the ultimate pickleball team together with NFL players, Ooh. who would that be? NFL players. Um, shoot, I saw Drew Brees. He plays a little bit. I saw Drew. So let's go against. Let's play against Drew. <laughs> And let's play against um, who else would be pretty good at that. Let's play against Josh Allen. I know Josh Allen's a good athlete. And then uh, actually, you know, but last year, um, kind of in the off season, I got with Brock Bowers, and we played against pickleball against each other. So I'll take Brock on my team and play against those two quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, let's go. And what I love about that answer too, which kind of leads me into something else I want to just ask, is just the importance of personality and the importance of tapestry in a locker room. It's not just about the individual skill sets everyone has, but how they all come together. And one of the things I noticed about you when you're talking in Vegas is just how affable you are, but yet you exude confidence. You know, can you just talk a little bit about what you feel like you bring to a locker room that a general manager should be paying attention to outside of just what's on a statistical chart? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is going in there um, and kind of earning the respect of the guys. That's the biggest thing for me, creating genuine relationships and uh, not trying to be, you know, some hot shot rookie who think I know it all because I don't. You know, it's it's a you know it's a, it's a league that's you know it's tough and uh, you know it's some older guys. I'm going there as a younger guy and just um, you know been around older people my whole life. Got three older brothers, so it's one of those things to earn their respect and uh, just kind of show them through my work ethic and uh, the quarterback position comes you know with that, showing that you work hard and you know being there late and uh, you know study hard. And I think once that kind of happens, uh, then come turn more into a vocal guy who, you know, hey, you know, I think he's earned his spot and earned his way um, kind of on this team and in this organization. And from there, um, just kind of keep, you know, keep going on that approach. Yeah, once I learned he played pickleball, he already moved up my board. Oh, there yeah. you go. Oh, he's number one. There yeah, you he's go. Number one. Besides yeah. Me I, yeah, I have to ask you, though, uh, some of you guys, some of the top quarterbacks are not electing to throw here. Yes, sir. And we get a lot of requests on asking you, 
why you did not elect to throw. So can you elaborate on that a little no bit? No doubt. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think um, you know it's one of those things where I want to you know showcase at a pro day. I got my you know going back to Chapel Hill and got a big day where you got a long script of like 65 throws that you go you know practice over and over and uh, you know you got a chance to go out there in front of you know shoot all these same guys, all the same scouts will come into Chapel Hill and watch this stuff. So, um, so really just want to come here and um, get to meet the team, get to meet the GMs and head coaches, kind of showcase them what I'm about, and then uh, kind of go prepare for that pro day, which is a you know big day for all of us. Give us some insight, though, because you've met with a lot of teams in the interviews and the formals. I'm curious what stood out to you about any of the interviews that you've had so far as far as what you were asked or even the impression that the team made on you. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I think, um, you know, I met with, you know, with 10 of the teams and uh, you know, I think one of the, you know, the biggest thing is just going in there and, and trying to you know, bring the energy every time I you know, went into a new room. I think, you know, the biggest thing is some of them are late at night and some of them are, uh, you know, we had a, a process from 8 to 10, you know, the, the first night we were here on Tuesday and it was um, like 8 to 10 in the morning, the next the next morning. So just bringing energy and uh, you know, the biggest thing As far thing as for what me, they asked you, though. Yeah, right? what they yeah. asked me. Yeah, mm-hmm. what they asked me. Um, yeah, they all, they, they'll, they'll pull up film up there, you know, ask me what I'm thinking. Um, you know, I think I was in there with the Vikings and uh, Coach McCown, you know, he coached me in high school. And uh, Coach O'Connell, um, who's a great mind, you know, they'll, they'll put up a play and then they'll, um, they'll, they'll take it away. And then, uh, you know, they'll just you know, do some things like that and have me draw it up again. Um, so, you know, Coach, the Giants were in there and um, talking ball with me and, um, you know, shoot the Bears, you know, talking ball. So a lot of them just like to pull up my film and talk ball. And uh, I think that's the biggest thing for me is just showing them, you know, on the board and showing them, you know, what this play is like. So, How, how many times when you're doing that do they put up a negative play, like a, a poor decision you make? Yes, sir, yeah. Do they go through that with you at all? Oh, 100%, and what, you were, yeah. what was going through your mind? 100%. And I think just be honest with them. Shoot, you know, some plays that, you know, I did, may, may have did the wrong thing or may have done something better. So just, it's probably 50-50, you know, positive and negative. You know, so so they, they uh, it's not like, a, like, oh, I gotcha, you know, you're doing the wrong thing here. Just be honest with them and say, hey, you know, I may sure have thrown this guy or thrown it away or something like that. So if a GM like Rick, who's right here, sits there and says to you, you know, Drake, why should you, you know, be the number Number one pick. People are talking about this guy, talking about this guy, or what have you. But you have all of your positive traits too. So if you were I and I right now with the GM, what would you say is why you should have me? Yeah, I think I can do it all. And I think the one thing is I love ball and I'm a winner. I think that's something that you can't argue. You know, everywhere I go, um, you know, trying to compete out there and trying to win. And uh, the biggest thing you you don't want a game plan for me or a game plan with me. So that's kind of my motto. Okay, before you go, um, I have to ask you to for our social media team. Okay. Build the ultimate quarterback yeah okay, okay i like that yeah so we're going to see how quickly you can think on your feet perfect let's okay, go so yeah, i'm, I'm going to give you a topic and you tell me a name present or past quarterback that would be your ultimate quarterback ready gotcha arm strength brett Favre. back in the day brett Favre for sure <laughs> accuracy accuracy um let's go drew Brees. rushing ability rushing ability um Let's go Josh Allen. Mix it up. Let's go Josh Over Allen. Over Lamar. Yeah, Lamar, okay. yeah, obviously great, but I like Josh's ability. <laughs> Toughness. Toughness. Um, mm, let's get the question, too. Let's go uh, Tom Brady. Size. Size. Mm, Justin Herbert. Last one, leadership. Leadership. Whew, I already used Tom Brady. Let's go uh, <laughs> best in the middle. Let's go Mahomes. Okay. Got to throw Mahomes in there somewhere, right? All right, Philip Rivers will be very disappointed in you. Yeah, I should have said Philip. Yeah, you're right. I should have said Philip. Well, listen, Drake, we appreciate you joining.